at Maxie's. Felicia thanks Cody for bringing her phone, and Maxie suggests he stay for dinner. Cody thanks them for what they are trying to do, but Mac knows where to find him. Maxie feels they should have a family conversation. Cody says they aren't family, and he's just the man who gives James writing lessons, and they should keep it that way. Cody leaves, and Mac asks what the point of that humiliating exercise was. Felicia won't apologize and was hoping that he and his son would talk to one another. She says he and Cody liked one another just fine before he told Mac the truth. She argues that nobody forced Cody to tell him, and why can't he let this bring them closer? She says Cody is just like him, too proud to beg to be his son, and maybe Mac wants him to beg. Mac won't let Cody or anyone jerk his family around with lies. Maxie says now he's the one lying. Maxie says no one has lied more to this family than her, and they forgave her. She says Mac never turned his back on her, so why can't he do that for Cody? Mac states he always knew that her intentions were good. While Cody is a virtual stranger, he can't just forgive and forget. Felicia says she's not asking him to, but they won't let him abandon his only child. Mac admits he liked Cody, but he lied to him. Maxie says Cody grew up with people who never treated him like family, and now Mac is continuing that. Felicia knows he's angry, and that Cody cost the two of them a year of getting to know one another. But how many years will they lose because of his anger? Mac says whatever Cody is going through now has nothing to do with them. At the quarter main stables, Sasha drops off a basket of food for Cody, and is about to head to the gatehouse with another when Michael shows up. She gives him the dinner basket and learns Willow is working late with Drew. A meeting for the new institute came up suddenly, and Willow couldn't say no. Sasha asks how they are dealing with Willow's new job. He says she is happy and gets to spend more time at home with the kids. He thinks she's happier, and Sasha agrees. Michael heads back to the gatehouse. And Cody returns and finds Sasha setting up his dinner. He's glad she's here, as he can use a distraction. She says there is a lot of that going around. He asks what is going on with her, and she says he has to swear to keep this a secret. Sasha says she stumbled on something that could blow up Aurora and ELQ. Cody asks what it is. Sasha explains that Nina confided in her that she was having an affair. Well, a situation withdrew. Then, during the fireworks, she walked into the solarium and couldn't believe what she saw. Drew and Willow were kissing, but they didn't notice she was there. Cody calls that a curveball. Sasha says Michael clearly has no idea, and Willow and Drew are working late tonight, and she doesn't know what to do. Cody suggests it could have been a one-time thing. He asks if Willow and Drew are the kind of people to sneak around. Sasha insists they aren't so he suggests she forget about what she saw unless she wants to blackmail them. He notes that it was his lame attempt to lighten the situation. Cody says people can be reckless and crazy, himself included. He says one of the hazards of working in someone else's home is finding out something you don't want to know. And the Q's money makes it more complicated. She decides to take his advice, but also tells him not to go blackmailing them. Curtis arrives home and is shocked to find Trina setting up a dinner. She says this was supposed to be a surprise for him and mom. She says it's been a year since he was shot and his family rallied around him, but look at him now. She says this is also to celebrate his standing and walking again. Curtis notices there are only two place settings. Trina says this is for her parents. So Curtis says in the future they will have a family cookout. Later, Portia comes home, sees the dinner, and Curtis puts on romantic music. He admits he can't take credit for this, as it was all Trina's idea. She felt they needed time alone after the year they had. Portia says she's so happy he's here, and they are still together after what they went through. Curtis thinks they should leave all the pain and fear behind them. Portia admits it's hard to celebrate when she's worried about the safety of her family. Portia is worried Heather could be walking the streets again soon, and the worst is yet to come. She reveals she is going to try and have Laura recalled. Curtis notes that was attempted before and failed. She says hopefully, Laura will come to her senses, 
but she can't take that chance, and neither can Trina.